When I was 12, I went camping with the Boy Scout troop, and we camped on the side of a mountain. And I think it must have been the rainiest, wettest weekend of my entire life. All my stuff was soaked. And as a result, we spent a lot of time inside the tent playing cards. But now, whenever I hear that sound of rain on canvas, it takes me right back there. I'm 12 again, I'm with my friends, I'm soaked, but I'm happy. And that's because hearing is a feeling. You know, it's literally the hair cells in your inner ear feeling the vibrating world around you. But it's also that other kind of feeling that you get when you remember something, or that feeling of connection with somebody else. And that's what makes it important. And most of us don't really even notice we're doing it. You're doing it right now. You're sitting there listening, hearing, and, and feeling. So I want you to think 15 minutes into the future when all of our communication is being mediated by technology, things like chat and Skype. And this also more by computers that are talking to us, things like Siri, Alexa, and Google. And this is changing the importance of hearing. I want to give you a small anecdote of how this can go wrong, though, is that I am Canadian, but I lived in Cincinnati for a couple of years, right on the border with Kentucky. And for the two years that I was there, I actually couldn't order at the drive-thru. I would go, I would roll my window down, and there was background noise, and it was a little unfamiliar, and uh, they had an accent. And, uh, and it was happening through this tiny little speaker, but more and more of our communication is, is happening through these tiny little speakers. And so when our technology doesn't consider hearing, it can break down, even for people with normal hearing. And you've experienced this at the airport, where the overhead speakers you can never understand. And you know what happens when you don't quite hear somebody? You do that, the smile and nod, right? And you hope they didn't tell you their pet just died or something like that, <laughs> right? So this can happen with technology, too. So if you think about Amazon Echo, you know, two things will happen. Uh, one, nothing. Or two, you may later find out that you've just purchased a Batman action figure. So it really matters if we're dealing with technology that's talking to us, how do we hear? Now, I'm an ear surgeon, and I've been spending a lot of my time thinking about how to democratize access to hearing healthcare by building tools that put all the necessary tools into one particular spot on a mobile platform so you could take it wherever it's needed. In this case, we initially started by taking it to Iqaluit in Canada's Arctic, but we made it so simple that anybody could use it, and now we're using it around the world where it's needed. I've also been thinking, though, about the 10,000th people a day who turn 65 in the United States. A third, a third of them have hearing loss. And they're starting to say things like, kids these days, they all mumble. That's probably not true. But I want to give you a, a personal example. If you plug your nose right now, just go ahead, bear with me, plug your nose and swallow, you're going to get a weird, muffly sensation in your ears. That's very minor and temporary, but imagine 10 times that. It's really difficult to hear when the environment is muffled. And the problem here is that hearing loss isn't always fixed by volume. It's fixed by clarity of communication. And so the question is, how do we use our technology to improve the clarity of our communication? I'll give you a specific example that you can take home with you today. Most of you use your cell phones like this, which, evolutionarily speaking, makes no sense at all because our brain has two ears, and that's why you look at something that you want to hear, to get input into both ears. By using one ear, your brain is actually trying to exclude it as background noise. So why do we use cell phones like this? If you have a parent, or maybe you have difficulty on the phone, you should use your phone like this, with both ears, because two ears are way better than one. I find it ironic, though, talking about mobile devices and part of, as part of hearing healthcare, because actually they're also part of the problem. 1.1 billion teens and young adults are at risk of losing their hearing from noise-induced hearing loss because they lack the tools and the ability to track and optimize their hearing. It's a funny problem, though, too, because these teens are using their phones already to track their steps. So is it possible to ask them to track their hearing with their mobile devices and use that information to optimize their experience, to use noise cancellation headphones to exclude the noise that they don't want to hear so they can lower the volume and protect their ears? I think so. One thing I've learned about using mobile devices for hearing healthcare is it actually helps solve a global health crisis, which is that 80% of people with hearing loss live in low- and middle-income countries and have no access to hearing. And this is why we took our mobile device to Peru this last fall. And there, in one week, we tested 2,300 children looking for hearing loss and helping them on their journey to rehabilitation. Because in Peru, if you don't have your hearing, it's like living in a room of one, isolated. And do you know there are 500 million people in the world with disabling hearing loss? 
If we can build a future where our hearing is taken into account by our technology, where everyone adapts and adjusts their listening environment, it turns hearing loss into only a difference and not so much of a disability. You know, the future is coming calling very quickly, and it's going to want to talk to you. And so we have to think about our hearing. I believe that everyone should have access to hearing health care. I believe that our technology can protect our hearing instead of damaging it. I believe our technology can work with our ears instead of against them. The first step, though, is to understand your own hearing. And then we can teach our technology to understand us. And when our technology understands us and our emotional connection to our ears, the future might just look like this. Siri, what does happy sound like to me? Thank you.